All right, welcome back. So today we've got the Ruger SP-101 on the table. This is the two and a quarter inch barreled version. As you can see, stainless steel. Really, really nice looking piece. Um, this has got the spurless hammer. So this is model number 5720. And this is in 357, which means it can shoot 38 special or 357. So for a stainless steel revolver, it's really not that heavy. It comes in at 25 ounces. It's got a one and 16 right hand twist. Packs five in the chamber. And obviously it's got the Ruger way to lock it up there and unlock the cylinder. So I tried to put this on the scale, my Wheeler trigger gauge scale, to get some idea of how much weight this trigger was pulling um, because it is significant. All right, my first shots out of the SP-101. See how this goes. That trigger pull is gonna take some getting used to, let me tell you. All right, I'm gonna put it on the trigger scale at home, but I think it's roughly a 14 pound trigger on this thing, so. Uh, let's load it up again and see if I can do better than that. <laughs> so the trigger on this guy is double action. Uh, it does come in, I tried to put my Wheeler trigger gauge on it and I was not successful. It only goes to uh, 8 pounds and Smith says that this trigger is about 12 pounds and I believe it. As you can see this is safe. I'm going to kind of take you through it here. Pulling significant amount of pull at the beginning actually I'm going to put a snap cap so I'm just going to throw a couple snap caps in so that you can go through the pull with me so as releasing the cylinder is the same on all the Ruger SPs just push down and I actually like this release a lot I'd probably choose it over over the Smith release or the Kimber release. That's, so here we got snap caps and just walk through it with you. I'm pulling and it's a significant amount of pressure to get that first bit going. And that's where it breaks. That's the release at the very end. So you've got um, a double action trigger, obviously, 12 pounds, which is significant. Um, it is easier to pull double. Double handed, you have a little bit more, more leverage that way, but it is it is heavy, but I did notice in particular, and I'm gonna roll footage of on the range with this guy, but once I got it on the range, um, the 12 pounds wasn't really a factor, to be honest. And I've noticed that with several guns where you'll dry fire them and you can have a different experience actually shooting them, actually pulling the trigger on them. And, and I know a lot of you guys out there saying, of course, duh, but um, that is the case. And that was the case with this, I, I did. I didn't have a problem hitting what I was shooting at. So another thing I like about this pistol <clears throat> is that the grips don't leave that strip of metal right here exposed. Um, I have shot other revolvers where that strip of metal is exposed and you can, you can get a significant amount of recoil into the palm of your hand. Whereas with this you can get a hoe grip or, or whatever you want and um, it's going to significantly cushion that recoil impact of this pistol. Um, it does come with a fixed 
rear sight, which is pretty useless. I am not a fan of this sight. Um, and you can't change it out because it's grooved and built into the pistol. The front sight, if you can see that, is replaceable. So you could put like a tritium dot on there or something else. It comes with a black, um, a black strip, but that's long since worn off. This is a used pistol, so it's seen, uh, seen quite a bit of use, I would assume. <clears throat> um, in terms of what you can do with this pistol, uh, the kind of the slot that I like these pistols for are just ease of carry. So I've shown you this with the Ruger LCR as well, but um, I will carry this with, <clears throat> with an ankle holster. Galco just slipped that in really quickly. Um, I have a little appendix carry holster, super easy. Um, I don't have a MIG holster for it, but MIG does make holsters for this, so um, this isn't what it would be, but obviously that's that's what it would look like, but just far more molded. And you can't use lights, obviously, because there's no pick rail, there's no place to attach a light to this guy. But what you can do is uh, check out Crimson Trace. And the prices aren't for the faint of heart, but Crimson Trace does make a LG303 laser grip and then an LG111 laser grip, uh, both of which come in at $374.99 and $264.99 respectively. So, as I said, not for the faint of heart, considering this pistol retails for uh, $859. So when you add that on top of it, um, you're, you're getting up into the over a thousand dollar package but um, for some people this might be a deal breaker this rear sight uh, moving on basically you can use a speed loader with this guy so I'm gonna unload those snap caps <clears throat> so I've got a uh, five star speed loader um, you can use and forgive the use of <clears throat> live ammo, but I'm not going to load it on camera. You can also use a Bianchi speed strip to uh, load it and to carry backup ammo. So um, I really like these because they sit flat in your pocket versus the the speed loader, which has a um, has a larger diameter footprint, so it's a little bit more uncomfortable to carry this in the pocket. And these rattle a little bit as well. They make a little bit of noise, so depending on you know how quiet you want to be with your carry that is a factor as well And then also, you can use a sticky holster with this guy <laughs> and just pocket carry it. So something like this, the sticky holster will just fit easily in your pocket and, um, and it will adhere to your pocket and you can actually draw out of your pocket and this will, the holster will stay in and just the gun will come out. So that's super handy as well. <clears throat> that's kind of the niche where these where these little revolvers fit and I find myself more often than not carrying my wife's LCR just because of ease of carry um, I'm not going into a particularly dangerous area and it's just really really comfortable and convenient so <clears throat> overall I really really like this pistol and um, I think Ruger knocked it out of the park and the fact that it's been in production for as long as it has, I wanna say the late 90s. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but um, it's definitely been, been a winner and they continue to sell briskly. So uh, let me know what you think about the Ruger SP-101, in particular the, the spurless version. And as always, Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me on the journey. LW Road, out.